Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The In-Between. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Cassie has a vision of this girl named Millie. She, it, which that vision also led to another woman, which later on we found that woman's name is Tara. So obviously she brings this case to... Uh, Tom, that's kind of interesting. It's just like a small scene in the episode, but I think obviously there's going to be, you know, big effects later on. But obviously it's like the whole Brian situation. Apparently the medication they gave him to shrink his tumor isn't going down. I mean, the tumor isn't shrinking, so they're going to have to get start surgery a lot sooner than they were expecting. Obviously Tom's a little worried, but Brian's kind of like, yeah, let's kind of not, they don't even want to discuss it in front of Cassie, but I think that's... Because obviously it's just, you know, once again, it's like the tumors on top on his brain. So it could be a very dangerous situation. So that's obviously why they're worried of, you know, at least Tom is very worried about this surgery, you know, especially it happening so soon. So that's something to kind of keep in mind going forward. But like I said, it was just kind of interesting. Like, like I said, it's kind of been like this background arc that's just kind of, well, like I said, been happening in the background. So, uh, but other than that, you have... Tom looking into it, and it turns out there's been a lot of missing people, in particular around the time Millie disappeared, and now there might be connections between these different cases. At first, it's like a couple hen- couple women disappear around that time, then as the episode progresses, you find out there's more and more. There's even a woman named Becky who recently disappeared. Now, what was interesting, though, is that Cassie goes and visits the parents of Millie, Millie's parents and her sister, and going into Millie's room, she listens to a tape and the Peter Rabbit song plays. It's like, well, that was connected to Mark and Ed. So I was like, wait, so what does Ed potentially have to do with this case? And what's interesting is because Cassie finally tells Tom about Ed and he's like, so he's visited you once. It's like, actually, he's kind of helped me. Well, he's kind of been somewhat helpful on previous cases and stuff like that. And it turns out, you know, he might have some connection to this. But what's also interesting is Ed was like, no, 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 you stay away. It is you mind your own business. That's why I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? I think for whatever reason, I am stupid because I could think because it's like, oh, Ed's been so helpful. I think I have let slip my mind. Right. He is a serial killer. He's not a good guy. But maybe I think I kind of got suckered into the whole thing of maybe he wants redemption. Maybe even Cassie kind of got suckered into it, too, believing like, oh, he has been helpful. He has done this and that. But all of that's just kind of the high his deeper darkness it seems like and it seems like all oh, this helpful stuff he's done maybe you know there's been more to it and maybe maybe he is saying that he just wants you know to find his way out of the in-between or maybe there's something even more darker and sinister at play here like i'm gonna I'm I'm run through the episode but there, I'm, there's a lot of interesting things that kind of ends up coming up like obviously like it turns out the person like who's connected to like like Millie's death was a hundred percent on Ed, but all the other deaths it turns out because there's been quite a few number of women that have kind of disappeared over the years like it's been like thirty some years, and it turns out that this was all by some serial killer that's kind of slipped through the system the entire time. It turns out to be this dude named Frank. I would not have expected that when it turns out like oh the guy they literally met. You will crime dramas you kind of have to assume that it's going to be someone you met during the episode, but it just it never crossed my mind to think oh. He he's the one because it turns out he him and ed he was kind of ed's mentor and everything and he was able to kind of keep doing what he was doing because he even brags about it later on that he's got more bodies than um wasn't it ted bundy that he was kind of boasting that he had more kills than him or some crap like that regardless obviously he doesn't admit to killing millie because he didn't and it turns into a whole thing of trying to figure out like okay so it was definitely ed but the only person who knows where she is and is Ed, but Ed's gone, and you can tell Frank's kind of smiling about it and stuff like that, so it turns into this thing of, like, Cassie wants to interrogate Ed about the information, obviously Tom doesn't want her to, because it's like, well, it could be dangerous, what I thought was so fascinating was kind of the conversation where Cassie's like, what, what? When I'm asking you, like, I'm always there when you ask for me, for my help when it comes to cases. But the moment I ask you for help, you want to back down. It's like, so what is it? Am I your daughter? Am I your little girl that you're trying to protect? Or am I the woman that helps you solve cases? 
that's what you got to decide from now on, Tom. You can't have it as me being both. Like, you have to choose which way you see me. And I was like, oh, man, that was kind of like a woof. Because even Damien was kind of like, rough. Like, you know, because you get it. Because Tom wants to protect her. Because obviously he knows how much of a toll this takes. And especially someone as evil as Ed. Like, the fact of is he's been around you all this time, too. Like, obviously he's, you know, very protective. But the thing is, he has drawn you into cases and stuff like that. Much to his own reluctance. Very much so to Brian's reluctance, you know. So, I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing um and then you had Damien you know kind of teaching her kind of how to handle this situation how to you know go about interrogating and chipping away at Ed to kind of make him lower his guard essentially basically how to get the information out of him without really realizing that he's getting the inf you're getting the information from him basically she has to piss him off to kind of knock him off of his balance so he's not as much in control but you even had this conversation with Damien where he basically talked about the fact is when you stare into the abyss, obviously the abyss stares back at you. So that's something she has to keep in mind. Well, it's also interesting, too, is and this is a point I was trying to make earlier was like the fact is that Damien was like, and there might be more reason why he stuck around you, not just because you could see him. You kind of look like Millie. And so that might that's kind of interesting that he stuck around Cassie this entire time because she reminded him of, I guess, his first love, potentially, because, you know, she ends up pissing him off, calling him pathetic. And the fact is, oh, look at you getting all riled up. You want to try and kill me, but you can't because you're a ghost, so you can't do anything. It's like, well, I'm going to show you what I did to her. It's like, well, show me then. Stop being such a punk. And he does. It turns out, prior to uh, Millie, he had never killed anyone before. She was his first. The fact of the matter is he had killed animals, but never a person. But the crazy, twisted thing is that he fell in love. And that's the thing that Cassie was trying to push at him and being like oh you claim that you fell in love with her oh she's the one that got away it's like no she's the woman you murdered you know so because it turns out like he'd spend his days like in love spending a day with millie but at night he'd be with frank and you know frank was his mentor and his whole serial killer thing which is like so twisted the duality that is ed and i think that's what adds that layer of twisted that he can try and live that normal life while also being a psychopath. I mean, to be fair, we've seen protagonists that it's kind of interesting because we're seeing a bad guy like this. We've seen protagonists like this. Dexter's kind of a, like one of those protagonists that kind of fits that role, but it's still just kind of fascinating because like I said, like now we're seeing it more so in the villain role of someone kind of playing and having that angle to them. Regardless, it was kind of, you can tell it was rough on Cassie because it's not only, because it's not her one of those visions of where she takes the place of the victim. I mean, obviously she did at one point earlier in the episode, but this is an instance of her having to watch him do this because it's like, these women are here, they're terrified, including Millie. Like, I'm there, but I can't do anything for him because all, all these are, are memories, flashes of the past. And so it's actually kind of sad, too, because he actually didn't want to kill Millie. What actually happened was Frank basically gave him an ultimatum as I could kind of have to choose between her or me. And basically he forced Ed's hand by inviting her in. But she saw what they were up to because the next victim was supposed to be his. I mean, granted, whether or not he had already killed any other women or whether Millie was exactly his first. His own, like we see at that point, like there was that woman they had like he was about to do it. But, you know. Millie had shown up so and it's, it's it's interesting like you know from a very like psychopathic standpoint of like understanding Ed's like whole thing about the whole cutting eyes out thing because those eyes of Millie's he never cut them out because but it's because he did care about her but those eyes were enough to can almost convince him not to do this and that's why all his victims going forward he cut their eyes out because he didn't even want to take the chance that someone those eyes, eyes in general, you know, because eyes are supposed to be like windows into the soul. Like he didn't want anyone else's eyes to even come close to convincing him to back away. So like he learned his mistake from Millie because she almost convinced him with her eyes and her words, you know, in a twisted way he was in love. And so that's why he did what he did to all those different people. And it's like, dude, and like when, you know, obviously like Cassie, when it's all said and done, collapses and kind of breaks down to the point like we see her like in the next scene, she's like, laying on um tom's couch just because i think it's one of those instances where she just didn't want to be alone after seeing that because it's like 
see, you know, you you see such evil. Like even if you're not feeling it yourself, but it's the whole thing of like I I wanted to help. I wish I can do something. She was even saying like maybe on some way she was like I hope the universe would connect me and Millie in that moment. It's like it doesn't work like that. Like I said, the whole thing is a memory, but she wanted to wanted Millie to know in this instance like you're not alone. I'm here with you, but she couldn't even bring her that solace in that moment, you know? And it's just that's just heartbreaking. Like it makes you feel you know, powerless, but the fact of the matter, you know, because that's why she looked on. It's like, I have to see this all the way through because, you know, I, I wanted to turn away from like this evil, but I can't because Millie came to me for help. So I needed to stick this through so I can find out where she is, give her peace, give her family closure, you know? And so they, she ends up figuring out the place that Millie would be buried is a gazebo where they met and fell in love and lo and behold it takes a while but once they start to and i thought it was kind of nice that damien and because obviously it's like oh it's getting dark and you know cassie's kind of like well you know she's waited all this time like you know she can wait a little bit longer you know referring to millie but seeing that determination the sadness in her eyes it's like no you know tom is like no like they all deserve peace her family and herself included so her, him and damien as well as all the other cops kept digging and they did find her you know bringing her family some closure, whatever closure they can find. Like, they knew in all this time, it's like, she's never been found in all these years that she was gone. Doesn't make the, you know, the revelation any less painful, but at least you know, you finally know, and not knowing is worse, you know? And, and that's, a, that's a sad situation to me, because you never, because you feel like not knowing is better, but because not knowing gives you hope, you know? And that's like... You know, you, you want to be optimistic, but a lot of times hope can be very, like, sad rather than hopeful just because it's like, you know, you're holding on to some hope that would never turn out to be true. So, but, you know, in a beautiful sense, you see, you know, Cassie smiling because she sees, you know, Millie dancing away before she vanishes. So, meaning she is free, like, you know, she was able to help. So, I thought that was kind of nice. But what was really interesting about all of this is learning that. Ed might not be your typical ghost because Cassie has seen him talking to some dude beforehand. Next time that same dude comes up to Cassie, it's like, oh, he told me you're a witch. I need to cut your eyes out, which I was like, oh, because she can see ghosts and stuff like that. But it's not until Cassie points it out later on. It's like, right, right, right. Ed's whole thing was about cutting eyes out. So it's like, because Cassie was like, no, it's got to be a coincidence because, you know, because Tom is like, yeah, the only way people, because it's like, yeah, ghosts, you, you know, people can't hear ghosts. It's like, yeah, unless they're like you, right? Right? But then it's like, but Cassie was like, no, 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 whatever, right? But that was kind of making me think. I was like, wait, has he been able to find a way to talk to people? And then you have Tom bring up something interesting when he brings up the Damien. It's like, he's like, I've never dealt with copycat cases, but the whole case with Mark, literally the first case of the show, it's like, did that seem a little different to you? It's like, yeah, like the fact is, Mark. Like, you know, understandably, it's like, obviously, he was able to commit the crimes and kind of do the whole copycat thing was because, well, obviously, he was there, you know, he witnessed his mom being murdered, but at the same time, it's like, or, but then again, it's like, or is it a situation that, what, what I'm saying is like, Tom had, well, Damien had pointed out to Tom, like, the fact of the matter is, it was weird how similar very similar to crimes were committed like it, like Mark's work look very similar to Ed's and you could tell what Tom was thinking that Ed had gotten to Mark and it's like wait what so it, this isn't your first time doing it like how like you know he's been around probably long enough that I guess if you stay in the in between long enough you learn a trick or two so that begs the question like how did he do it? Is it something he just learned? Because obviously he knows a thing or two because he was able to help, you know, with um, Cassie's best friend, Stalker. Not best friend, Stalker, but his, um, what was the, the character? Um, it was the actress who played um, Castle's daughter in TV show. Cause like that Stalker, they were able to get rid of him because of Ed. But because Ed knows a little bit more about this in-between world than Cassie does. Which is interesting, but I guess, like I said, he learned a trick or two in his depths, and so I'm curious, is it just because he's so evil that, or did, did someone else teach him that, or what? The question, it becomes, like, how can he interact with people? Is it that people who are very, in a similar level of evil, or is it that type of ghost thing where it's like, you know, ghosts, like, you know, when they channel, like, well, because we saw with Agatha, 
Am I thinking of her name right? It's probably not Agatha. The little girl goes, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not remembering right. With her, her mom and her sister, like, the whole thing is, like, she could do stuff, like, start influencing humans, kind of hurting them in a way like she was doing to her grandfather. So the question then becomes, like, maybe, maybe Ed kind of did the same, learned to do the same thing, except for hurting them. He whispers in their ear, kind of channels his malice into them or maybe it's just a situation of like he goes after specific people who have a little darkness and he kind of whispers in their ears and tugs at that darkness so maybe the guy that was threatening to hurt um cassie because they had referenced like some of the stuff he had done so it might it's not like he was like necessarily a good person to what i remember i don't remember everything that he'd done but then like tom at the end of the episode goes and contacts he goes and talks to Mark and brings up the whole. It's almost like Ed was there. Did you have you seen him and has he been whispering in your ear? He's like, Mark's like, that sounds crazy. Like, how could I be talking and seeing a dead man? But then when he goes back to a cell, Ed is there being like, Oh, I think it's time, son, that we take you, get you out of the cell. Now, when he says son, I'm assuming it's just kind of a thing of like, oh yeah, like just because he's your protege, kind of like kind of continuing what the whole Frank thing did. Or was it a situation where he is legitimately your son? It's just a connection no one knows or something like that. I'm curious. I, that that kind of feels like that might be me like reaching for something that's not there. Or maybe that's going to be, you know, the twist with it. But it's so interesting. Like the question, it becomes like, why would you listen to the guy that murdered your mom? Because part of me was thinking like, what if it wasn't actually, well, if even back then Ed was training Mark, maybe, there, I don't know, because he testified, didn't he? Uh, in trial against Ed, so I don't, I don't know, but maybe it's just that thing of like that darkness. You know, once again, you peer into the darkness, it peers back at you. He, from a very young age, had peered into that darkness, and probably as a kid, it messed him up. And when Ed came back, it, you know, probably for years or who knows what point in time Ed got back into his life. But having Ed probably whisper in his ear all that time, kind of being the only person he has in his life or whatever, you know, some semblance of some twisted Stockholm syndrome thing of like, oh, he held his captors, he killed my mom. But the fact of the matter is he's the only one I can rely on because he's the closest thing I have to family in a twisted way. Maybe or like I said, maybe that is his dad. I don't know. I'm very interested to find out what the hell that's all about, how Ed has been able to do what he's done. And so interesting, like I said, because you almost forget. Like I said, probably a lot of people didn't forget. I kind of let something on, I'm like, yeah, Ed's kind of a piece of shit ghost, human being. But the fact of the matter is we're seeing him slide more into that direction because once again, the question then becomes, was this whole thing with him being like, oh, I'm trying to, like, was that all an excuse to get Cassie to help him because it was his way of kind of reliving, like, Millie still being alive because Cassie reminded him of that? Or was there some good part of him trying to be good? Or was it all some twisted game I'm leaning with the latter? But who knows? I'm very interested to kind of dive into that and find out, like I said, what that's all about. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.